I literally threw up in my character tenant pouch. Hi guys, I hope you're all having a magical day and welcome back to my channel. One of my absolute favorite series that I've ever done on this channel was my crazy Disney guest stories. And I know how much you guys have loved them and I've received several, if not hundreds of requests over the past like two years, three years. I don't even know how long it's been since I created that series. But um, ever since then, I've had lots of requests to continue it. When I created it, I kind of envisioned it as a three part series and one of the third one to be kind of like a grand finale of the series. I also didn't work for Disney, in my opinion, that long compared to like some other people. I really only worked there for 10 months. It seems like it was longer than that, but I only worked there for 10 months, four months as a member of the Disney college program and then six months as a character performer. So it really wasn't that long that I was there. So I really did not accumulate that many crazy out there stories. Most days were pretty normal. All that I had was that I wrote down. However, since revisiting the parks as a guest, I feel like there's a couple more stories I could share with you. And there's definitely a few stories I might've slipped my mind or maybe I just chose not to include it the first time for good reason. So I thought since we're all stuck at home in quarantine, this would be a great time to continue on my crazy Disney World guest stories, but from the perspective of me being a guest and me being the crazy guest. Without further ado, let's jump into part four of crazy Disney guest stories. My first story actually comes from when I was working as a character attendant during the Disney College program. So I got to be a character attendant in fall of 2015 and it was so much fun, mainly because I got to work all the parties. So I got to work the Halloween parties, the Christmas parties. It was so much fun, especially because I didn't have a bid. So what bids are basically, if you're there full-time or part-time, you get the opportunity to basically say, I want this schedule where on Mondays, I as a character attendant get to work with Winnie the Pooh. And then on Tuesdays I work with Ariel and Wednesdays I work at the hall and like so on and so forth. So basically every single week your schedule is essentially the same. But for people who are seasonal or if you are in the college program, you don't get the opportunity to pick out your schedule. So my schedule was different every single week, which I actually really liked um, for Enneagram. Anyone who does Enneagram, I'm a number seven. We're very spontaneous. So I actually really love the fact that I didn't really know what was happening every single week and it was always a surprise. And I got to work with a lot of different fun characters because of this and I loved it. One time, actually it was on Halloween. It was on actual Halloween. I was working the Halloween party and I was working with none other than Captain Jack Sparrow. This was actually my one and only time, I think, working with Captain Jack Sparrow and it was so much fun. I'll be totally honest, I didn't really pay attention the last time I was at Disney World and I don't work there anymore. So I have no idea if he's even still out and about meeting. He kind of was here and there, but he was more during the Halloween parties. He was one of those characters that came out during every single Halloween party, like for a couple of years in a row. So he might still be there, he might not. But if you guys haven't had the chance to meet him, I would highly recommend it. He is so much fun. And it was just like one of like my best experiences working as a character tenant was working with Captain Jack Sparrow. We did know or hear that Scarlett Johansson was kind of in the parks around that time. And I remember talking to the person that was working with me as a character tenant, like how cool would that be if we get to see her on Halloween, that would be so epic. But again, there are so many people in the parks, so the chances of seeing a celebrity are pretty slim to none. Even if you know that they're in the park, like at Disney World, it's so much bigger than Disneyland. It's kind of hard to like see a celebrity. However, we heard that not only was she in Magic Kingdom that night, she was also dressed like a pirate or she was wearing a pirate costume. And I thought, oh, that's cool. Maybe she'll want to see Captain Jack Sparrow since she's dressed kind of like a pirate and he's a pirate. Like that would be really cool. I went on break and I heard later on that she was actually had just gotten off Pirates of the Caribbean and I totally missed the moment. But what happened was she was walking back from Pirates of the Caribbean. She saw Jack Sparrow. She decided not to get in line, but she did wave at Jack Sparrow and they had a little mini interaction as she was walking by. And I was so bummed because I had just barely missed Scarlett Johansson. However, I kept my eyes peeled and later on the night, I did happen to see her walking by again. And it was so cool seeing her person. Granted, it was far away. I did not make a big deal about it because obviously you don't really want to attract attention to celebrities, but it was really cool to see her in person. She is a lot shorter than I would have expected. I feel like a lot of celebrities and actors and actresses are a lot shorter than you would expect, but it was still really cool and fun that she actually like had an interaction with the character I was working with that night. I did miss it, but I thought it was cool that I did get the chance to see her later. And it was just kind of a neat experience. I don't think I saw any other celebrities as a character attendant. 
to be honest. I think that was my only one. So that was it, but it was really cool and it definitely was the highlight of my night. I love Halloween and so looking back on that, that was definitely one of my favorite Halloween memories. A more recent memory that I had that was more of a magical memory and it had nothing to do with characters was when I was at Disneyland, I believe it was just this last year. Yes, it was just this last year I went to Disneyland. I went to Disneyland a couple times this last year, but it was when I went in July. So what happened was I found out, this is crazy. I found out like a week in advance that my brother and my sister-in-law were going to Disneyland. They live in Seattle like me. And so um, for whatever reason, I didn't know they were going. And then I decided, wait, I have time off. I'm gonna go with you guys. So I bought a plane ticket like a week in advance, flew down just for the weekend to go to Disneyland and it was like the best decision of my life. I loved it. Again, being a seven, I'm very spontaneous. So that was a lot of fun. Um, but my sister-in-law, Katie, who is also my maid of honor um, for my wedding coming up, she has never seen Fantasmic. I don't know how we didn't know this, but she's never seen Fantasmic. And her favorite character is Rapunzel. So if you guys haven't seen Fantasmic at Disneyland, Sorry, it's the best. I love it. I think it's so much better than Disney World's. I mean, Disney World's has some pretty epic moments like Pocahontas, but like, I feel like overall the Disneyland version is better. And I know there's some like tension between like Disney World versus Disneyland over their Fantasmics, but I do think the Disneyland one is better, but I just love the Tangle scene. And I also love how they incorporated parts of the Caribbean as well. So anyways, she hasn't seen it and Rapunzel is her favorite character. So I was like, oh my gosh, we have to see Fantasmic. You're going to love it. So unfortunately we didn't time our day perfectly. And so we got there a little bit late and there wasn't really a lot of spots left. So I talked to a nearby cast member and I said, hey, you know, it's her first time seeing Fantasmic. She's never seen it. And honestly, I'm not that familiar with Disneyland. I'm more familiar with Disney World just because I worked there for 10 months. Um, so I was like, where is a good place to watch the show? And again, not expecting anything out of it. Just asking him genuinely, like, where would you recommend that we stand and watch it? I know there's a couple different areas you can go to. Like, where do you think we should watch it? Um, and he's like, well, just hold on for a second. I'll be right back. And I said, okay. I was like, that's weird. So he walks away and then comes back and he's like, actually, you know, we want to make a magical moment for you guys. Um, and we're going to let you guys into the fast pass viewing area. So come back at this time, just tell them so-and-so sent you. And they gave me all the details of what to do, which I thought was so sweet and so nice. And honestly, I was not like trying to get that. I was genuinely just asking like where we should stand, but it was a really special thing that he did, especially cause like none of us had kids with us. We're all adults. Like he did not have to do that. And it was just so special. Like her face lit up when she saw the tangled float. And it was really cool cause we actually got pretty close to the floats because we were in the fast pass area. If you ever have the chance to watch Fantasmic, I would highly recommend watching it from the fast pass viewing area. It was actually really nice too cause everyone was sitting down. So we didn't have to look over anyone and we had a beautiful view of everything. And just felt so close, just sitting up there. That was definitely a really magical moment and just a really cool thing that that cast member did just to make our, our trip extra special. Okay, this is a story I am not proud to share at all, but I figured, you know what? It's quarantine, we're all lacking some entertainment. Why not just throw this out there? I did not go out. Let me just say this first. I was over the age of 21 when I was working for Disney. I was actually, was I 22? Yeah, I was 22 because I just graduated college and did the college program after I had graduated. Um, um, so I was over the age of 21. I was living in housing that was like 21 and over. Um, I just didn't feel like the need to drink. I wasn't really around people that I was like super, super close with. Me, me and my roommate, we lived together actually at UW. So she was my roommate from UW and on the college program. So I knew her really well. But other than that, I just didn't really know a lot of people. And I'm not the type of person like in that setting. I don't know how to explain it, but like... I just didn't really feel like going out and partying. I feel like a lot of people that did that were younger than me and it wasn't like that much younger, but it was younger enough where I just was like, I just wanna to go to my shift, maybe watch Netflix or a TV show and then go to bed. That's all I wanted to do. So I really was not partying at all except for this one night. There's a one night that I decided to go out because it was my friend's birthday. We went down to downtown Orlando. I can't even tell you what club we went to. It was, I do remember it was like three like stories tall. It was like, or maybe four stories. It was pretty big. Had a little bit too much to drink again because I was not drinking the entire time because I just had no desire to. This is the one night I went out, drank too much. Uh, it was a really fun time, but you know, held it all in, just had a good time. Nothing crazy happened, just had a lot to drink. The next morning, wasn't feeling so good. Haven't had a hangover in a very long time. Um, but I was like, you know what? I can't call out just because of the point system and the way it works. It's really tricky. And I was like, this is definitely not something I'm gonna waste a point over. I'll just suck it up and go to work. I get on the Transtar, go to work. Still not feeling super great. Just kind of having a hard time. And so um, I may have fibbed a little bit and I may have told them 
because I thought that by being there and clocking in that I would still not miss a point. But what I should have done is I should have actually worked for a little bit and then gone home sick as opposed to clocking out beforehand because I still got dinged a point. Anyways, um, I was supposed to be working as a character tenant with Drizella and Anastasia that day. And I was like, hey, you know what? I threw up. I do not feel good right now. I think I have a flu or something. Can I just go home? And they're like, yeah, sure. So I thought, you know, maybe I would get off free saying that like, oh, I think I have the flu or something. And then no. So anyways, did not throw up. But um, as I'm walking back to the Transtar bus station, I'm really not feeling good. Uh, not at all. And I get on the bus and I'm really not feeling good. And I'm like, there's no way I can hold this in. So I threw up on Transtar in the bus and there was no one on the bus. There was no one near me. I was in the back and I had nothing to throw up in. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I don't have a bag or anything. I literally threw up in my character tenant pouch that I have all like my like pens in and my notepad, like my stickers, all that I threw up in my character tenant um, pouch. And I felt better immediately afterwards, but I was like, and luckily it actually held in the liquid, sorry, this is gross. Um, until like I got back and I was able to wash it out and clean it out. Um, but yeah, it was really, that was gross. That was a low point for me. It was feeling hungover on Transtar and then throwing up on Transtar and then throwing up in my character tenant pouch. So I'm um, pretty sure I didn't share this story with you guys last time, but it's like, you know what? Stuff happens and I didn't go out after that at all. I think I did actually, as I take that back, I think I did as a performer, but I definitely did not go out the way I went out that one night. That was my one and done only time going out like downtown Orlando. And that was, that was it. That was it for me. Cause I'm like, this will not be happening again. <laughs> This next one's gonna be kind of short, but it was a really cool magical moment. I've noticed since working for Disney World that meeting characters at Disneyland and Disney World is very, very different. Not only will you see characters roaming around at Disneyland, but you see characters interacting with each other that would, and honestly, I feel like should not really interact, but it makes a really fun experience. So for example, you'll see like Peter Pan talking to the evil queen or he'll make a reference to her, or you'll see like Ariel also talking to Peter Pan or different things like that. Like as you're walking around, they will like definitely acknowledge each other and sometimes interact and it is really fun. But at Disney World, that would not happen. Like you would only see like Ariel interacting with Prince Eric or maybe another princess if you're at a dining experience. But outside of that, she would not be saying hi to Peter Pan and they would definitely not be crossing paths ever. So it it is kind of fun at Disneyland how they do play that up more and a, a lot more of the characters like interact with each other. I feel like it's a lot more entertaining, especially as like an adult. I feel like I can appreciate that more. I was at a Disneyland Halloween party, not this last year, but the year before that. And it was super fun. I had never gone to one at Disneyland before. And that was like my dream growing up as a kid because I had this one VHS tape where they had all the villains coming out Halloween. And I thought that'd be so cool to visit the parks during the holidays. So I actually didn't get the chance to do that until I worked for Disney World. And now I've gone to Disneyland during Halloween time for the past like I think five years now five six years oh my gosh well it's been a long time but I've gone like every single year just because I absolutely love it so anyways it was my first time going to Disneyland during a Halloween party and I was with my friend Alyssa we just happened to be walking by um, where the princesses meet and we saw Belle, Tiana, and Sleeping Beauty all get on the carousel and ride it with a bunch of little kids. And it was like the most precious thing ever. So we of course like ran and jumped and hopped on the carousel too. I had a really fun video from it, but it was really cool just to see them do something like that because you would not see that at all at Disney World. And just seeing the little kids faces when they got on the carousel with the princesses, it was so special and so magical. And I just thought it was really, really fun that they did that. So. Anyways, not much of a story there, but it was something that I thought was really magical and definitely stood out to me throughout the rest of the night. It was a really fun interactive moment, which I wish they kind of did more of that at Disney World, but it made the night really special. Even like meeting some rare characters, which I thought was really cool, like that probably stood out to me more than that. Everything else, just because I knew like how special it was. So this next video is one that I really wasn't intending on ever sharing. The original purpose for taking this video was for a video I did I wanna say like a year or two ago where I was interacting with characters and I wanted to show you guys like how to interact with characters. And then I got this video and I don't know if something was in the seafood that day or what, but I just felt like Ariel wasn't really being herself. So um, it definitely felt like a crazy guest interaction afterwards. Cause I was like, wow, that was really interesting. But for the sake of this video, I thought I'd share it with you guys um, just because I found it really funny and really entertaining and maybe you guys will too. So we were just chatting, the three of us. There's three of us here, it looks like I'm alone. About our favorite things to do here, but we forgot to record it so we could always remember what our favorite things to do are. 
Everyone's favorite is churros, obviously. Mm -hmm. Meeting friends. Mm -hmm. They talked to Aladdin. Mm -hmm. I'll probably do that later. I don't know. I'm gonna go with the flow. Um, we're gonna stay away from turkey legs and sandwiches. 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 And sandwiches. Well, not all sandwiches. I don't remember what kind they well, were. Well, then you can't eat any sandwich. No, but they're so good. <laughs> You ever had a grilled cheese? Yes, okay. From Jolly Holiday? No. no? Oh, there you go. It's too warm for that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> as I digress, we were talking about some pretty crazy stuff, and we found out something was falling out of her backpack. You missed a lot, but there's the recap. Bye-bye. <laughs> I will say most of the time meeting Ariel, it's not like that at all. She'll probably talk about Flounder or Scuttle or Prince Eric or something mermaid related but hey good to know that if you guys are ever in the area that the grilled cheese from jolly holiday is really good and apparently ariel approved this next story is one of my more recent ones and it comes from my most recent trip to disney world from a bachelorette trip so i am going to be talking about a really fun very rare very unique character meet and greet experience these are things that don't necessarily happen all the time and they happen more if you know someone who's part of a show so sometimes you get to meet characters in shows but usually you really don't get the opportunity Opportunity, but unless you know someone who's like working for the show. For example, a couple years ago, I knew someone who was in the Royal Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair show, and I had the really cool opportunity of meeting Mickey, Donald, Goofy, and Daisy after the show, and it was really special. And again, it's not something that's ever expected. Even if you work there and know someone who's part of the show, it might not happen. So it's not something I'm trying to like promote, but it was a really cool, definitely like a magical moment, a magical experience. Kind of similar to the story I shared about like getting a fast pass to go see Fantasmic. It was something that was definitely not expected. And I think that's what's so great about magical moments is they're definitely not expected. And it's not something that you can just like try to get. It just kind of happens. So one of those magical character meet and greet opportunities that doesn't like rarely ever happens is Sometimes you get the opportunity to meet Max and Eric after seeing Voyage of the Little Mermaid. Um, even working there as a character performer and knowing people who were part of the show when I was working there, I never got the chance to do it. And I would say that out of all the like the magical kind of rare character meet and greet experiences, that was definitely at the top of my list, especially as someone who loves Ariel, clearly. I thought that would have been so cool. And I was hoping to get the chance to do that while I was working there, but it just never happened. So I was like, okay, well, it's not gonna happen because I don't work there anymore and I definitely don't know anyone that's part of the show, so it's all good. It's never gonna happen. That's totally fine. However, on my most recent trip, my friend Colin was working at the show and he invited us. He's like, hey, you should come by and see me in the show. And he was doing puppetry. And I was like, oh yeah, this sounds like so much fun. Plus he was a character attendant with me. I hadn't seen him in so long. And we used to work together all the time when we were character attendants in the Disney college program. So we figured out what time to go see him and he surprised us. He was so kind. He actually got us these VIP tickets. So we got to sit in the front row and we got to pick our seats before anyone else. And I actually had no idea they had redone the show and it was so cool. I feel like they gave Ariel a much needed upgrade with her tail. So it was really cool to see the show. And then afterwards it's like, oh, just wait outside. I'll come out and see you. And I was like, that sounds great. I can't wait to see you. So we were messaging back and forth. And then I saw him and we were talking for a little bit and his manager came out and introduced herself. And she's like, oh, who's the bride? I said, that's me. It was really nice to meet her and talk with Colin. And then we were talking for a little bit and he was like, oh, and actually there's just one more thing. And then I turn around and in comes Erica Max and I about lost it. There's about like a one second clip. Say we get some portraits together, celebrate a little. I would love I'm sure it'll come out better than that statue I got from Grimsby. <laughs> yeah. so me and my friends were dying, mainly because one, we knew how like that just never happens. And two, like it was just so cool. And it was just like, I was, I was not expecting it in the slightest. Like I had no idea that was going to happen. And later Colin told me that he had actually gone through my Instagram and looked to see if I'd ever had the opportunity to meet Erica Max and realized I hadn't. And he made an extra special magical moment for me to have the opportunity. So it was really sweet. It was sweet for so many different reasons because like I never got the chance to do that when I was working there. Again, not like it was expected in any way, but it was something that I was kind of hoping would happen and it never got the chance to happen. And I was like, it's okay. I'm okay if that never happens. And it happened and I had no idea it was going to happen and it was even better because it was a total surprise and I just thought it was really sweet that he went out of his way to do that so 
that was a really crazy I guess story for me just being able to experience that and we also had a really cool interaction that trip as well we got to go see Jasmine and Aladdin after Fantasmic and that was something that I've never gotten to do before either and that was really really special as well it was really cool just to see um, see some friends that I hadn't seen in a really long time working for Disney World and I feel like when you work for Disney like you just stay connected for the people that you work there with like I haven't seen them in so long but just talking to them it was like it was like a day had gone by and it was so cool and it was just so special. So I just had to share that story, um, not to like, point out like the whole like rare character interaction thing but just the fact that like my friend was so kind and I hadn't seen him in so long but he just like really was so kind enough to like set that all up it just made me feel so special and so loved and it was honestly probably like the highlight of my trip I'm not gonna lie I mean they're, okay there was a lot of great highlights for my trip that were like amazing but that was definitely up there on like my favorite memories from my bachelorette trip and it was amazing and honestly right now I feel so grateful that I got the chance to go on that trip just because of everything that's happened just really grateful for that wonderful magical moment Moment. This next story also comes from my most recent trip and it is something that happened totally randomly as a guest was not expecting it to happen But we just got really really lucky. We were really excited to go on the rise of the resistance If you guys haven't seen it I have a whole video showing our experience how we got up Super super early and just our whole process for trying to get on the ride Eventually we did we did have to wait like 12 hours or something But we finally not even 12 hours. I think it was like eight hours, but Anyways, we had all day. We actually did get to go on the ride, but as we were getting in line for the ride, we were probably one of the last people to get into the queue before the ride broke down. As the ride broke down, Disney was great at like bringing by snacks and stuff like that. And we got to meet characters. So we got to meet Ray and V. They both came through the line and talked to us. It was so cool. We got a picture with Ray, which was actually a really cool, unique experience because I'm pretty sure you don't even have the opportunity to meet or take pictures with Ray like normally. I think she just kind of roams around and you can like interact with her maybe take a quick photo but it's not like you can go meet her like I think you can still meet oh gosh I th well we didn't do it this last time so I'm not totally sure I think you can still meet like Kylo Ren and maybe Chewbacca but um Ray's one of those characters that just like walks around and you don't really get an opportunity to meet her but it was so cool because they brought her through the line they brought a photo pass so we got to take photos with her we got popcorn we got I think we got like waters and and chips and bananas like they just like spoiled us for like the 30 minutes we were waiting it's like this is great why can't this happen every time but it was such a fun experience like I feel like it was honestly I feel like that was like better than I mean the ride was pretty great but it's like knowing how like rare that was that Disney's giving us like free food and free water and we're going to meet these characters that like no one gets the chance to meet like that was pretty cool I'm running out of daylight here so if you see me adjusting the lighting that is why this last story I wanted to share um is near and near to my heart and it's not anything super big or super extravagant but I feel like a lot of magical moments aren't super big and super extravagant, but they do make a lasting impact on the guests. And I thought this would be a good story to end um, this video with. So my sister-in-law, crazy story, my sister-in-law and my brother, our two families are fourth generation family friends. So my sister-in-law's great grandparents were friends with my grandparents. Our grandparents were friends, our parents were friends, and we were friends. Like we have pictures of my brother and my sister-in-law, like his wife together when they were like one or two years old, like really little at Disneyland. We grew up going to Disneyland together and we grew up around their families. So my my sister-in-law's brother he's my age and he has cerebral palsy he is and he's also deaf and he has some handicap issues he is so fun though he's so silly and even though we communicate through like minimal sign language um, the only sign language I know because this is what he mentally he's he's not at the same age as we are and so like the things that we talk about are just like we talk about farting and we say like you're weird and we say you're crazy and we'll make like funny faces so like that's how, like how we interact is through like sign I mean that's the sign language I know so it's very minimal um and but that's like how we interact with each other and I feel like even though we don't like communicate a lot I feel like we still have a lot of fun and like Disneyland's like a happy place for all of our families to be together and it's always fun seeing it through his perspective I went to Disneyland with him I haven't been in a while but I went with him when we went in July when I went with my brother and my sister-in-law and I decided like a week beforehand I was gonna go. It's always like really special to see how cast members like treat him. Um, this last trip he was in, I think he was, in, yeah, he was in a wheelchair most of the time um, just because it is hard for him to walk with having cerebral palsy. And it was just really sweet to see things happen that were, I could tell were special just because of him being there. And one of them being that he loves Star Wars, he loves Chewbacca. And it was really cool because Chewbacca at Disneyland is not like, meet you can't just like go meet him but he 
um, will roam around uh, Galaxy's Edge a little bit. And so we just happened, it was funny because his mom was like, oh yeah, I feel like I always pass by Chewbacca when he's coming out. We just happened to see Chewbacca coming out. He's working on like a plane or something and then he's walking around, but he sees Cameron and he spends some quality time with him. And I will show you guys the video. He's spending some extra time with him. He's being really kind. He's being really patient. And I just thought that was so sweet because Chewbacca is one of his favorite characters. And just to see him interacting with Chewbacca just like really warms my heart. And it was really cool because I could tell that like Chewbacca was spending extra time with him. Um, he didn't have to, but it was really cool just to see that. And it definitely made Cameron stay. Another experience that we got to have was with, actually I learned a lot like with Cameron going to the parks. I don't really, I feel like I can't really speak to that experience of what it's like if you are in a wheelchair and what the park experience for you might be like. But with him, it was really interesting experiencing it, especially at Disneyland with our new fast pass system. Because basically what you would do if you're in a wheelchair is you would go up to like the fast pass person or an exit. I mean, it's usually designated where you would go and then you get a Basically, it's like a fast pass on your phone. They're using the max pass system and basically it's just like a return time So however long the line is so let's just say the line is like an hour long It will tell you like come back in 60 minutes But then you can go do something else and then come back So and then they do load you in in a different section Usually it's at like the the end of the ride so we were kind of um, using that throughout the day and just just finding things to do in between those times but the line for Splash Mountain that day was really long. I think it was like an hour or 10 minutes. Like it was really long to the point where we probably wouldn't get the chance to do it. But that was something that Cameron really wanted to do and he was looking forward to it. So we just went to go get in line just to go or to the end of the line to go get just like this, I forget what it was called, like time card or you basically have to go get your time to find out when you could come back. But based off of how the day was going, even if we were to get one, we probably wouldn't get a chance to go on Splash Mountain. So um, he didn't know that. <laughs> so we were just going there to get a time and we were talking to the cast member. And so we were trying to explain to him, oh, we're just here to get our things on our phone so we can know when to come back. He's like, well, why wait? Why don't you just go on right now? And we're like, okay, sure. So it was really fun because we didn't have to wait an hour and 10 minutes to be able to go on the ride right then and there. And it was so fun. And I do have a video, a quick little clip of um, Cameron after the ride and his face was priceless. Like he looked like he had so much fun. I had a great time. I got soaked. My friend Taylor, did not have as great of a time. She also got soaked, but our reaction's very different on that ride. But it was again, a really special magical moment. It was something so simple as him saying like, why wait, why don't you guys just go on now? And I just thought that was so sweet and so kind. And it's something memorable, obviously like almost a year later, I still remember that interaction and just seeing cast members treat Cameron with kindness, um, even though he has a disability and was in a wheelchair, um, that just like, makes it so, so special. I'm sure you guys can relate to just seeing someone treat like your family member with kindness. It just makes you feel special. And it was just really cool just to see those two things happen. Cause I could tell like it definitely made a difference for Cameron and definitely made his day. And it was really, really fun. Anyways, I thought that'd be a great story to end this all with. Again, it's not anything super crazy um, or super, super phenomenal, but I feel like sometimes the most memorable magical moments are ones that are just very simple acts of kindness that just make a really lasting impression. So if you guys have any stories to share, I would love to hear that. I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section down below, just sharing your stories and interactions that you've had. What are some memories that you've made? Maybe it's just a cast member doing something really small, but it's made a lasting impression on you guys. I've heard from so many of you over the years, just sharing your stories. And it's always amazing because I can always tell it's something very small on the cast members part, but it just makes a, such a huge difference to you guys. And I love hearing those stories from you guys. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy during this pandemic time. And I really hope things can go back to normal soon, but thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye.